so many of you may have heard of my Nitrox 3D course, which is really basically a course on how to use modifiers to model. And, and the advantage of using modifiers when you model is that you can basically create a parametric or non-destructive type of workflow for your modeling. And this is really important if you're a designer, because a lot of times you want to go back and tweak a design based on client feedback or even your own feedback. And as a designer, you know that iteration is a real important part of creating a compelling design. So this Nitrox video has been out for a while, and here are some you know, shots of it. As you can see, some of the things that you can do, it's pretty amazing actually what you can do inside a Blender. And if you think about it, it kind of turns Blender into a little bit of a CAD application. And with that, you can actually create 3D fast. And I should also mention that I have a product called KidOps and another product called Design Magic. And between those two products, I've taken a lot of these extended modifier groupings and created objects out of them. So it allows you to very quickly add and subtract objects to your scene and use that to model them very quickly. And, and there's some videos that uh, I'll share with you in the description that show you how to do that. And one of the things I've been wanting to go over for a while now is the weld modifier. When I first created these set of videos, the weld modifier was not available. And by using the weld modifier, it actually enables you to even be more accurate in your modeling. And let me show you a little bit how that works. You can get this course over on Blender Market for under $5. And if you're on my Patreon, which is a $1 subscription, the course is free and you can check it out. Now, of course, it, it, it is using an older version of Blender, but all of the modifiers are the same and you should be able to very easily go from the older version of Blenders to the new version of Blender. It's not like there's any big secret there. Anyway, so let's talk about the weld modifier a little bit more. It's important to understand how modifiers can help your workflow. And if, if, you, if you haven't seen it, you should check out this video because I think it'll show you some of the potential for using modifiers to help you model, especially help you design because design is a very iterative process. But one of the things that Blender has come out with a while back and is not shown in that particular video is the weld modifier. And the weld modifier is really important when you're taking a modifier approach to modeling. Uh, let me explain why. So let's take this model, let's just go here. And let's hide this and take this and oh, all right, these two, shift D and move it up here and select these and we'll boolean. it. So you can see now that, let's go ahead and put our auto smooth here. I have this, all this stuff, we gotta make sure this is pinned to the last always. Okay, so now that we have all that set up, you can see that this is non-destructive modeling, right? Because, you know, I can move this boolean anywhere I want to and that works out just great. But let's, let's go back into here, let's turn off these and let's go back into here and Let's put a radius on these corners. So let's go ahead and tab, and I wanna make a non-destructive radius. So I'm gonna select this edge, and on my bevel weight, I'll make it completely one, and then I'm gonna add a modifier, and I'm gonna add the B key for bevel, and let's just move that to the very top here. And with my limit method, I want it to do weight, and then I'm gonna make it something large, and let's make it 12. Remember, if you follow my courses, you'll know that this number should be either one or eight, but nothing in between, because when you use something in between, you can end up with smoothing artifacts, especially when you start doing pulling stuff. So it's gotta be one or eight or higher than eight, you know, 16, whatever is fine. So, so now that we have this and let's go ahead and uh, toggle the stacks, we can see all of this and let's turn them all on. And you see this again, still is very non-destructive, right? Let's tab out of here and let's move this. So you can see it's still very non-destructive. I can come in here and I can change this bevel size all I want as well. So the whole thing is still very non-destructive. But let's go back into here. Let's turn this off again. And we're gonna turn the bevel on and the auto smooth on. And then let's tab into here and let's select this edge and let's make the bevel weight one also. Okay, so I wanna tab out of this and let's viewport viz this again. And you'll see that this is working. It's working fine. Now, but if we look at our object a little bit uh, closer, and let's just go in here uh, and understand what we're doing. So let's just go ahead and shade this to flat so we can get a little better picture. I'm gonna throw out this one and I'm gonna apply the bevel and I'm gonna viewport viz all this off. So let's go and tab into here and yeah, we'll go into our vertex and I'm gonna select this and you're gonna see that I have two vertices selected here, not one. And so what does this mean? Well, this means that when I look at this and use an exact Boolean difference, I'm gonna be in 
pretty good shape most of the time. Every now and then I might not. But if I go to fast, let's just go to fast, this won't work at all. So what I need to do is just add a modifier called a weld. Here it is. And we're going to move the weld above this. And now you see that it works in fast mode also. And also sometimes in exact mode it won't. Now, like I said previously, this was not something that we had in Blender when I made that course. So the, the fix there at the time, let's go back and look at this. The fix back then was, let's go back into our Boolean, set this to fast, was to come in here and change this number so that it didn't go completely across to the middle. So now we're going to have two vertices that are separated just a little bit. So that's really an important concept is to use these weld modifiers right before you even do Booleans. If you're going to use bevels that are going to actually intersect each other or overlay two vertices on top of each other. Originally they were considered to be slow, but they've gotten a lot faster now. And so they work really well. So I highly recommend go ahead now and adjust this to a high number on these bevels. And I always use exact anyway, but if you adjust to a high number, you know, you're going to be way more than what it can do because you've got the geometry. Don't forget you have that said to clamp over. If you don't, it's going to be weird, but but this works great. So anyway, I hope this little tip helps some people as they're using modifiers in the Nitrox 3D course. And if you haven't seen the Nitrox 3D course, check the description. It's a, a video there for it. And a link is here as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.